there is more and more evidence supporting the performance benefits of using shorter cranks on your bike. And if you are not joining the short crank revolution, then you are giving up precious watts. Many cyclists think that using shorter cranks is just for opening up the hip angle, helping with hip restriction, and lowering the torso into a more aero position for time trialing. Shorter cranks will do all of that, but they will also give you more power and more cycling efficiency. Don't believe me? I'll show you proof from on the bike, not just theory. In this video, I'll present three 20 minute FTP tests that I've done in the last 12 days, two with 175 millimeter cranks, which came on my 61 centimeter Athos, and one with the 160 millimeter cranks that I've purchased for my 61 centimeter Tarmac. The bike fit on each is matched as closely as possible with a five millimeter difference in relative saddle to handlebar drop being the main notable difference. So specifically, the saddle height has been adjusted so that my knee angle at bottom dead center of the pedal stroke is consistent. For each test, I was well rested with the previous day being a non-riding day. Here is the simple test protocol for each attempt. The bikes were set up on my Wahoo Kicker Core, which measures power output at the rear cassette, so it's independent of crank length. I did a five minute warm up sitting between 100 and 150 watts, including a few short bursts up to 300 watts. I then got off the bike for five minutes before starting the test, put some earbuds in and press play on Metallica. Using just the Wahoo Kicker software, I then rode for 20 minutes as hard as I could sustain. Test one was with my 61 centimeter Athos, set up with the standard 175 millimeter cranks. Here is the Wahoo file from the test and there are a few things to take note of. One, my average power output was 290 watts over the 20 minutes. And two, my average heart rate over the 20 minutes was 172 beats per minute. Three, I was clearly struggling towards the end of the ride with both my power output and my cadence dropping significantly. Four, in the final five minutes, even when my power was dropping to the mid 200s, my heart rate was still sitting on 178. I was working as hard as I could. Five, my average cadence was 81 RPM. Test two, Six days later, I did exactly the same test on my 61 centimeter specialized Tarmac SL7, which now has 160 millimeter cranks on it. Here are the highlights. One, my average power was 324 watts, 34 watts higher than on test one. Two, my average heart rate was 169, three beats per minute less than on test one. Three, I was able to sustain my power output keeping consistent all the way through the test and even increasing into the mid 300 watts in the final few minutes. Four, my average cadence was 82 RPM. Test three, when I looked at the data closely from my first test, I realized that I spent the first three minutes at 95 RPM cadence, which was obviously in at least one gear too low and that may have affected my endurance for the rest of the test. So after another five days had passed, I set up again on my Athos with the 175 millimeter cranks to double check. Here are the results. One, my average power was 313 watts. Two, my average heart rate was 168 beats per minute. Three, my average cadence was 81 RPM and four, I kept my power and my cadence fairly consistent throughout the ride. So for simplicity's sake, let's just look at the raw power figures without a 5% reduction for it being only a 20 minute test. I've got two tests on the 175 millimeter cranks, the first giving a power figure of 290 watts, the second giving a power figure of 313 watts. I've got one test on the 160 millimeter cranks and that gave a power figure of 324 watts. So, case closed. Shorter cranks for the win, giving me a benefit of between 10 and 34 watts on a 20 minute FTP test. Well, obviously this is not a randomized controlled trial. There's only one subject 
me and only three tests. You could suggest that test one should be discarded because I obviously chose the wrong gear for the first few minutes and this could confound the result. Or maybe I was sick, maybe it was just an off day, lots of maybes, but it definitely felt like the most difficult of the three tests. You could say that on test three, my heart rate was one beat per minute less than on test two, so I obviously wasn't trying as hard. That is not how it felt. Also, if you look at the heart rate line for test three, you will see that there are long stretches of about three or four minutes where my heart rate doesn't budge at all and then suddenly jumps two or three beats per minute. I think the heart rate monitor was not recording accurately here. It didn't show the real steady increase and then suddenly it caught up. This likely results in a reduced average heart rate recording for test three. Still not convinced? Let me take you back to a similar test I ran in early 2024. You can see the full video of that test shown here. I set the Wahoo kicker at 300 watts on ergo mode and I attempted a full one hour FTP test on each of the different crank lengths, again, a few days apart. With the short 160 millimeter cranks, I was able to last for 50 minutes, finishing with a heart rate at 178 BPM. Four days later, I did the same test using 175 millimeter cranks. And on that day, I was only able to ride for 30 minutes and finished with my heart rate already sitting on 180 beats per minute. For comparison, in the shorter crank test at the 30 minute mark, my heart rate was only at 174 beats per minute. It was much easier for my cardiovascular system riding with the shorter cranks. I don't need any more convincing. I know that for me, as a six foot four rider, cycling with 160 millimeter cranks is performance enhancing. I've already tested FTP, max power output, and heart rate at sub FTP levels, and all tests either favor shorter cranks or have no performance loss with shorter cranks. If you then factor in the aero benefits and the improvements to hip comfort, why would you stay with legacy, outdated, performance diminishing, two long cranks. So why can we get more power from riding with shorter cranks? It comes down to three main factors. Number one, the main propulsion muscles, the quads and the glutes are being used at their strongest lengths, i.e. the peak of their length tension curve. And specifically, they can avoid working in a more lengthened position. Number two, with the knee and the hip staying in a less flexed position and closer to a fully straight position throughout the pedal stroke, the external moment arm is reduced, meaning that less contraction force is required to keep the hip and knee straightening out. Number three, by maintaining the same cadence with the shorter cranks, this means that the foot speed and therefore the muscle contraction speed is slower. A muscle contracting more slowly can produce more force and this greater force more than makes up for the reduced lever length. So it's a combination of physics and physiology. I initially made the change to 160 millimeter cranks to help with my severe hip arthritis, but I've now had both of my hips replaced, so I don't need shorter cranks for comfort anymore. But I'm planning to stay with the 160 mil cranks because I know that they are performance enhancing. The shorter cranks make me a stronger and faster rider. Now, just to be clear, not everybody needs to be riding 160 millimeter cranks. Not everybody needs to go down 15 millimeters in crank length. All I'm suggesting is that we should stop blindly accepting the standard components that are fitted on our new bikes and maybe consider some alternative options that might suit us better. If you have enjoyed this analysis video, please give a thumbs up like, maybe consider subscribing and then click notifications on. Then I'll see you in the next video.